who's supporting Gaza? Who's supporting uh, Hezbollah? It's, it's Iran. Is the Iranians the friends of the Americans? Iran is sending a message to Israel. The, the biggest threat for the Americans is this area of the world to become independent. So it will be the richest area on the planet. The Iranians sadly don't see themselves belonging to this bigger unity. This is the biggest issue, the Sunni Shia divide. So the Shia basically, they're scared of a Sunni unity. The reason we are in such a humiliating position as an Ummah is because we don't understand world politics. Nobody's gonna give you unity. Unity is demanded, unity is taken. Are we headed for World War III? <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're here with Sheikh Usta for our I3 Pulse show, alhamdulillah. And um, there's a lot of people been talking online about political analysis, what's been going on. And well, this is why Sheikh's here with us today. And so, Jazakallah khairan. Ameen. So now uh, we've seen just yesterday, you know, Iran launched a response to Israel. And people have mixed feelings about this. Like, you know, what's happening here? I've heard some people saying this is just WWE theatrics and act, everyone's acting and pretending. And what's fake? What's real? Like, what people are confused. What, what can we understand from this? For sure it's real. But what's real about it? Well, this is what we need to understand. What's real about it is that there was missiles that were, that were shot and they were shot on specifically military targets, three or four military targets within, within Israel. So when, when you see these things... Both from both sides, when you see that the casualties, the number of casualties is very low. When you have like 200 or 300 rockets, missiles coming mm -hmm. in. Um, what does that tell you? That tells you basically that Iran is sending a message to Israel. So this is, was this real? Yes, it's real. Anybody who says it's not real is a problem. Like, this is real. The missiles were real. Iran actually fired them at Israel. But was this a strike to basically cause damage? No. This is a strike to send a message that if you're going to continue doing what you're doing, uh, and especially if you're going to attack Iran itself, uh, that Iran basically has the ability, this is the most important thing, mm. has the capability of hitting very sensitive areas, knows how to get these missiles there, and your missile defense system is not going to actually be able to take care of hundreds and thousands of missiles. So ima imagine all these missiles were targeted at the sensitive areas. It would be the, devastating, the, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So this is what's the message. Was it real? Yes. Was it there to actually cause damage? No. This is this is what people need to understand. Was did, did, was the United States notified in Russia? Yes. You know, I'm not making this up. The Iranians said that. So why is there? Why is, why why do they have to notify the United States? Because the United States is kind of the power broker in the Middle East. It is a world power. It is actually the world superpower until today. Uh, is it declining? Yes, in terms of uh, strength and ability and and. But is it declining to the second place or the third place? No, it's still number one. Uh, so, so this is really kind of uh, what happened yesterday with Iran. So it's not definitely it's not WWE, and definitely it's not like Iran. You know, is the savior of the Muslim world. This, both of them are not true statements. So now Iran did launch this strike, as you mentioned, and mm -hmm. they've dealt, they've shown symbolically that they can. They've shown that they can do damage if they would like to. Now, what is the goals that you know behind like why now like iran has been saying that they would launch a response for since you know you know many things have been happening many assassinations and you know and and certain things that iran was yeah, yeah, threatening yeah. Israel that we're going to launch a response soon has been many months yeah why now you're 100 percent right i mean iran was hit in syria was hit in lebanon was hit inside iran i mean haniya was killed in iran so so the iranians were hit multiple times and, 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 and Hezbollah was hit, as you know, basically, the, the, the whole high leadership, the, the, the highest leadership in Hezbollah, almost all of it has been obliterated. And that's the strongest arm for Iran in, in, in outside, uh, outside of their own country. Um, so the threats after the threats after the threats basically never worked. Why? Why aren't they taking real actions? Why are they sending this message now? Well, the fact of the matter is the United States have told Iran or threatened Iran, if you want to, whatever you'd like to say, really, to not create a response, okay? Same thing with Hezbollah. Hezbollah and Iran, there's a red line that was drawn by the Americans that they should not respond to Netanyahu. The problem, the, the Americans, the, at least the Biden administration problem is with Netanyahu himself and his government. You see what I'm saying? And, and the Americans would be happy with another government, right? A little bit more, a little bit less right wing. But sadly, the Israeli public is behind Netanyahu in terms of yep. being able to defeat Iran, the axis of evil. 
the only thing that the, the Israeli public is angry about with, with, with Netanyahu is about not about the war. Maybe some some of them because they're, they're not winning. And Netanyahu haven't, haven't been able to create any strategic victory anywhere, neither in Lebanon nor in Gaza. But they're only angry about the hostages, that he's not negotiating to get the hostages, right? So he has public support. He has some public support. And loss of sentiment in Israel is basically pro-war. Go kill them all. Sal is very scary that you have a, a, you know, a, hu- a, a huge community that's so bloodthirsty. You know, see what I'm saying? So Netanyahu is, is, the, is the Biden administration's biggest problem. The Americans, if they have an issue from a foreign policy perspective, is not with Iran or Hezbollah, because when, when the United States draws a line, that line is respected. And, and they're there basically with their aircraft carriers, with all their, like, you know, their, their air force and so forth. You know, that red line is drawn. If Iran trespasses the red line, the Americans will hit Iran real bad. And that's why the Americans, appro- we can say approved, yeah? You can say approved, you can say whatever it is, basically. They were, they approved, they were okay with basically such a strike because Netanyahu went and like, they're de- he's devastating Lebanon, he's, he's smashed one portion of Beirut, they're going all in, so they, they don't know how to, to stop him. And the Iranians now are looking bad in front of their own people. So they told the Americans, look, we have to have some response. Anyway, so this is really, this is basically, the, this is the power balance in the region. We need to understand, when we speak about politics, you have to understand the internal politics, the local politics, the regional, and the global. And those three has to basically, like a three-dimensional analysis, needs to happen together to understand any political action. So on this, on this point of um, Israel not playing by America's lines, yeah. a lot of people typically say nowadays that America is at the control almost, like the mother is, the father is Israel and yeah. the son is America, yeah. APAC, all this foreign donations yeah. and businesses, all what, you know, what people typically say. And America's, like they spent uh, just yesterday, I think, what, f- almost a billion dollars just defending Israel just from their, um, you know, carriers and from their um, battleships. Yeah. So what is the reality behind that? Is that the case or is it not? Because it seems like you're saying that America's the one who draws the line. So it seems that they are the ones who are the father in the relationship. Uh, within the Middle East, but as you can see, they can't draw a line for, for yeah. Israel. Yeah. So Israel is, is, is very, it's, it's a very, you can say, it's in a, in a powerful position. I don't say it's a powerful state because it's not. Israel depends on America. Yep. Depends on the aid. Depends on the transfer of technology. Depends on the, the sales of weapons, right? And any, any country that's so dependent on all this stuff is not a, definitely cannot be a strong country. You see what I'm saying? So, but it's in a strong position because definitely because of the lobby, the Israeli lobby in Washington, the APAC, because of the Zionist community in the United States that's very strongly positioned within the Congress, within the multinational corporations, within the economy. So they're very well positioned, right? So they, they, do, they put pressure from one perspective. But see, we need to understand the relationship between the United States and Israel is a relationship of a parent to a child. The parent is not Israel. <laughs> it's not, people flip them, which is crazy. The parent is America. Okay? The one that created Israel was the British. Like, I don't know why people basically have very short-term memories. Like the one, the, the Balfour Agreement or the, the Balfour Promise was by Britain to the Jewish community in the diaspora in Europe that they will have a Jewish homeland in Palestine. So the, the, the Jews had to travel into Palestine to create this state by the support and the help of the West in general, but specifically Britain at that time. And then the United States, after World War II, inherited uh, you know uh, uh, this this support uh, or this, this this child. Um, so what does that mean, parent-child relationship? Because dependency, right? Like we said, Israel dependent upon the United States. Why isn't the United States? Is any? I guess your next question is like, how come basically they can't draw the line for their child? Exactly. <laughs> <You know>? Exactly. <laughs> so so the, the the fact of the matter is, uh, the United States foreign policy, okay must have Israel in the Middle East. It is, it is 100% positive. It's 100% advantageous for the United States and the West to keep Israel within the Middle East. Okay, They're not interested in anything else except to make sure that this state exists, continues to exist. It is safeguards, it's safeguarded 100, at 100% rate, which is why there's basically continuous support of the Americans into Israel. You see what I'm saying? So you, you can't, so that's why basically they have to go more more or less negotiate with the child. You know when you have a teenager, you know you can't go and like basically tell them go up to your room and sleep. They might basically be a little bit more, what do you call it, 
independent, autonomous, a little bit independent. It's or... like in your face, basically. Okay, got it. Got it. The, you know, they, they'll tell you, they'll, they have the ability to say no and reject your direction, right? So with a teenager, you can't just basically tell them go and they'll go, that you have to negotiate. So that's, that's, that's what it is. So, so Netanyahu right now definitely is like more of like a, a, a you know, a teenager just had his purity and, and he's not listening to anybody. Uh, so this is where the United States is like in a dilemma. It's, the Biden administration is looking very bad. And Trump is, is, is like uh, investing in this. He's like, he's like taking this opportunity to humiliate him, right? Like, so they're both hitting Biden with that. Like they're using that failures. Because if we were in power, we wouldn't let this happen. Like, you know, the war wouldn't happen. Blah, blah, wouldn't happen. Iran would have been smacked. So the Biden administration has been humiliated by the right. But at the end of the day, it's a foreign policy. Elections and, and election sloganeering is something. By the way, there's, there's a research uh, paper in, in, in the United States that over 80, 80% of the, of the promises by politicians basically are, are all lies. So people can say whatever they want to say during elections. Uh, probably uh, Trump would do the same thing as the Biden administration. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's, uh, you might have some different tools. Again, there's a little bit of difference between the Republicans and Democrats and how to conduct the U.S. foreign policy. U.S. foreign policy does not change between the parties. What changes is basically the execution, the techniques of implementing the policy. Got it. And going back to the parent-child analogy, um, I'm thinking, you know, as a, maybe as a parent, someone has a teenage child, they're misbehaving, maybe try to take away their device or something like that, right? Uh, the analogy I'm trying to put forward is um, America spent so much money on weapons to Israel, right? Mm-hmm. If they want them to... Some people would say, okay, well, if America wants Israel to listen to them, they could just cut the weapons and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and one day and bring them back. They'll come back home and say, you know what, I'll, I'll be here yeah. now. You can't do that. You see, as an Amer- like the American foreign uh, affairs strategist, or the Jewish strategist in America, if they conduct any such steps, uh, that's gonna, this is a signal to the Israeli public that the Americans are not going to protect us. In case of any war mm. with Egypt, with whatever, Jordan, with Iran in specific, right? And if, if this is the case, everybody will just leave, right? This is a pro- like most Israelis have double passports, double citizenship, yes. right? So p- people, if people don't feel secure that this is a country that I can be safe in, why would you stay? Like, why, why, I, I wouldn't stay. Like most, most of us Muslims based in the West, why did we leave? Because there is no security. So you came over here for security. So it's a natural tendency for, for people, for families to take care of their kids. Like, if this country is not safe, I'm just going to leave. That's why the Americans would never, ever, even, even like mention you know, as a threat, let's say, or even like, they wouldn't, I forget, they wouldn't even bluff with this stuff. The mm-hmm. American aid to Israel is unconditional, constant, regular. They will never even bluff with this. Mm, they never compromise. They never, never even because, suggest otherwise. Because they always it's, affirm it. You know what I'm saying? So Iran, we spoke about Iran, what their, res- their response was. You spoke about Israel and America and you know different components here. Now, different players here. Mm. Some would say that Iran's trying to liberate Palestine. They're always, you know, doing the, they have protests, chants for Palestine. They're very close with different, you know, their, you know, funding. They have the different proxies. They even launched um, ballistic missiles into Israel. Mm. And some would argue that their agenda and their goal is the liberation of Al-Aqsa. And Mm. this is, you know, we need to um, respect that. And they're the ones who should lead this effort. Yeah. So so this is inaccurate and sadly basically some people might have a backlash on what i'm going to mm. say but see, like iran their goal is not to liberate palestine okay that's not a goal that they have their goal is to basically expand within the middle east to conquer more areas f- from a geopolitical perspective and expand its influence to become a bigger let's say uh, player on the chessboard um, at the end of the day, you need to understand the Americans can, uh, you know, um, they can hurt Iran a lot. Like imagine basically the United States has 10 aircraft carriers, right? There's two or three of them, are, you know, within the Middle East right now, you know. Uh, so the, the amount of uh, firepower from an Air Force perspective, from a Navy perspective, they can do a huge damage. I'm not saying it's going to be a walk in the park. But, but the Americans can wipe out Iran. And Iran's surrounded by a bunch of um, bases across all the countries all surrounding the it, U.S. bases. 100%, without doubt. Without doubt. 
So, so, so again, like the, 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 the red lines that the Americans have drawn to, to Iran is for them to expand into the area. You need to ask me why. And, and then the answer is that the biggest threat for the Americans is this area of the world to become independent. Mm. If this area of the world becomes independent and they unify, you could have a country that's bigger than China, bigger than Canada, or even big, bigger than Russia, which is the biggest country in the world from a landmass perspective. Because if you unify the Muslim uh, landmass, you could easily basically get, you know, get to from, from Jakarta to Morocco. And by the way, the maps are, the projection of the maps is, 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 mm. is, is twisted, sadly. You know, the, the, this area in Af- Africa is humongous. Uh, you know, Southeast Asia and, and the Middle East is, is way bigger than how it looks on the map. This area would be humongous in terms of it will be the richest area on the planet. It will have two billion people that have the same uh, belief system, same religion, actually. Not just belief system, but religion and belief system. They, they, they all can use one language, two billion people, which is Arabic. It is the richest by far uh, in terms of area of any area in the world. And it's, it's maybe has the most youthful uh, population on planet Earth. It's, uh, it's an area that, that has many strategic uh, you know, uh, geographic areas on the, on the planet Earth. So if you bundle all this together, this is this is due, this is, this would prepare the biggest superpower in maybe the history of the planet Earth, right? Uh, and, and definitely, any any superpower does not want to have another superpower takes over them. So that's why, if the United States let Iran play around, they give them space to play around because they don't. The Iranians sadly don't see themselves belonging to this bigger unity. This is the biggest issue from a geopolitical perspective is the Sunni-Shia divide. I'm, I'm a Sunni, and uh, from a Sunni perspective, we don't see, uh, 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 we see the Shia as pure Muslims. They're Muslim, they're full Muslim, they're not like 50% or 75%. We, we can love the Shia as our brothers and sisters, right? The problem is with the other side. The other side can have basically people who can spread hate at, a, at, a, at the whole madhab level. The Iranian regime hijacked the Shia madhab, and they they, they created politicization to uh, create a polarization between Shia and Sunni to mobilize. How do you mobilize people through through emotions? What's the strongest emotion? Hate. So the, sadly, the Iranian regime invests in Sunni hate. Just like again, I want to be fair. Just like basically many countries, including Saudi Arabia, mm. invest in Shia hate. You know what I'm saying? But the Iranians were more successful. <laughs> you see, what I'm saying so. So unfortunately, and this is this is, this has to do with with the Shia, you know, um, fiqh jurisprudence or ideological framework. From a Shia perspective, you're supposed to follow your Imam. You're supposed to follow the Mujtahid, the the Faqih. That's where basically Wilayat al-Faqih came as a concept by Khomeini in 1979. We can speak about it later, but I'm just saying. So the Shia basically don't see themselves as part of this unity. They are scared of a Sunni unity. Okay, they want to actually dominate uh, the Middle East and expand. And there was even a recent, uh, I'm not sure if it's recent or not, but there's a, this little question that was asked by one of these uh, Iranian politicians. The journalist was saying basically, oh, so you guys are preparing to, to, to have a fight with the, with, the, with the great Satan. He's like, no, 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 no. We, we don't want to fight. You know, the Americans are our you know, friends, but we want to invade Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. This is so the Iranian strategy is to occupy Saudi Arabia, not not to do not to not to free Palestine. This is a sad. See that we want to be balanced. I'm a person who promotes Shia Sunni unity fully. Okay, do, do we accept basically the Shia views? I mean, there's a difference between Sunni and Shia, right? No, we yeah. disagree with the Shia views, right? Still, they're Muslim, and the Muslim has haq upon us. So we we are Muslims, brothers and sisters. And we're speaking about the average case. We're not speaking. There's there's extremists on both sides that basically might cross the line of kufr. Mm-hmm. I understand. Anybody who curses Sayyidina Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, specifically in her in her honor, he is a kafir, hundred percent. But this is what people don't understand. This is like a one percent of the Shia or two percent, whatever it is. So this is the issue. The the Americans are happy. So basically, look, is the Iranians the friends of the Americans? No. This is dumb to even basically you know ponder about. But is the is the is Iran the enemy of their enemy? 
And is the enemy of your enemy your friend? At least on a temporary basis. Yes. If I was America, I would invest in Iran more than anything else. And that's why basically I still remember a quotation that I couldn't find basically online, and I'm going to be uh, frank, but I heard it, wallahi. Uh, Robert Bayer said basically Iran is our biggest ally. It's better ally than, it's more important ally to the United States than Israel. Now whether he said it or not, I'm, I'm telling you basically, I swear to God that I heard Robert Bayer on C-SPAN saying this 15 years ago. But put that aside. The issue is, this is the, re the geopolitical reality. That if you just think about geopolitical interests, the United States needs to dominate this area. This area is, is, is super majority, 90% uh, Sunni. So, w w and the Shia, sadly, from, their, from, the, from the political elites of the Shia, the, the, the Persian regime, the, the Iranian regime, sorry, uh, their interest is to basically, they, they, don't, they don't like to basically be part of this Sunni majority. So you invest in them to create more divide. This is divide and conquers everywhere. And I would, if I was an American, I would do it. Hmm. But it's not about me. It's about basically this is the, if you look at the history between Iran and the United States, you see the support of the Americans to the aspiration of the Iranian state. To be honest, basically, if Netanyahu and the Israelis are angry at something, it's because Israel is not supposed to expand in the Middle East. It does not have a green light from the Americans to expand in the Middle East. Ask me why. Why is that? Well, you know, because because yeah, Netanyahu is holding up the map of like the greater Israel. He's always holding it all the time, holding it all the time in the UN. So, definitely. what if someone says he does have the permission, but he just has no, to take no. the steps? No, to, no, yeah. no, he does not have the permission. Why? Because like the Israelis, because of the support of the Americans, they are a very technologically advanced state. Mm. If they are if they are let go to basically conquer the area, they would be they would become that superpower. Mm. Like if, if anybody dominates the resources of the Middle East, they become they 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 start to have the fundamentals of a super of a super state, of a world power, and that means basically that child becomes totally independent. That's why there's a red line, which is why the Israelis and the Netanyahu is going nuts. It's like you allow Iran to expand, but you don't allow us. So what is the proof that basically the Americans don't allow the Israelis to expand? Well, who? Uh, who uh, uh, sponsored the, the peace between Jordan and Israel? The Americans. Mm. Who, sponsored the, who sponsored the Egyptian peace with, with Israel? The Americans. The Americans. Who was trying hard to basically create peace between the Syrians and the Israelis? The Americans. Yes. Who supported Iran to, 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 to help support Hezbollah in uh, pushing back Israel into the northern border and just stop there to protect that border that mm. the Americans want? The Americans. So this is what we need to understand. The Americans actually, and this is why the Israelis right now are like, they're fuming from the Americans. You give a carte blanche to Iran to expand into Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Bahrain, Yemen, uh, you name it basically, even to Saudi Arabia in, 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 in the Sharq, Sharqiya, which is the eastern part, into what other basically, like I for, maybe I forgot other countries, Afghanistan, for example. Why, why do you allow Iran to expand and we are locked into this area called Palestine, oh. right? Because they have an aspiration of the great Isra the greater Israel, yep. the kingdom of David, which is from the river to the river. I mean, the Israeli flag is two oh. blue lines. This is the Nile and the Euphrates. So all these areas, including Medina al munawwara and to, this, to the Mediterranean, this, this becomes the greater Israel. So this is what they have as aspiration, but the Americans are like, no. See what I'm saying? At least for now, look, things change. Would the Americans allow them? Maybe if they have a mechanism to be able to control their growth so they can continue to become dependent? Sure. But this is the red lines. So there are those who would say that you made good points here. You pointed out these the realities. We saw what happened in Syria. Um, and so we know what happened with Iran, Hezbollah in, in Syria. And we don't excuse those things. But at least they're doing something. Right, you look at Egypt, where they have they close the border with the with Gaza and uh, what's happening there. They don't lift a finger. You have Saudi Arabia, who brings up propagandists, Israeli propagandists on their national TV, and now they're saying they're they're trying to normalize. You have um, Jordan shooting down the rockets, the Iranian rockets. Um, you also have Turkey talks big game, but again, they're selling trade and food and providing food to Israel. These countries, these Sunni nations, have only supported the oppressor. At least Iran is doing something. This is very emotional talk. 
We need to understand in, uh, the, the intent and the interests of countries. If people don't think independently and understand the reality as it is, and they just go with like such sloganeering, that's why our, our sadly, that's why our ummah basically gets like easily moved, you know, and swayed with with a, with a, with, a, with a speech of one person. It comes like gives us some tears and like every look he starts like screaming for them. What the heck is this? Our political understanding is so shallow is, is ridiculous. Okay. So that's why Mela bless you. That's why that's why we have the show, right? You know, hopefully we can help elevate a little bit with whatever Allah have given us. You know, you know, we, if we basically improve it one step, you know, we might not be the perfect couple here, but uh, or duo. But uh, anyway, the, the the point is, who support who's supporting Gaza? Who's supporting uh, Hezbollah? Who's supporting the Iraqi militias? It's, it's Iran. How did this whole thing start? This whole thing started basically with with the Israelis. Finding it a, a, an amazing opportunity to kick out the, the people in Gaza into Egypt. Okay? This was the goal. The Israelis, and I believe they had intelligence that this was going to happen. So that's why they, they, they had a full prepared plan. There was many reports that this been... Yeah, without going to that yeah. because people are going to... But, but the Israelis at least utilized October 7th very, very, very well. Hmm. They destroyed Gaza, basically. All of Gaza is destroyed. And by the way, the killing doesn't is non-stop. Every day they kill a little bit. As long as it's a little bit, it doesn't cause like an uproar worldwide. Like 50 deaths per day to 100. That's a kind of this is a rate. And then the injured is like the same. Multiply that by, by, by 8 or whatever it is. Every day. They want people to leave. They don't care where. They'll go to the, to, to, to the sun, go to the moon, go to Mars. Like get Elon, Elon Musk to come and take him to Mars, but so this was the goal, and then and then and the Americans basically blocked that, right? Because the Americans can easily tell Egypt take those two million, let them live in in, in there. There's a Rafah across the border, like kind of mm. like the border splits the, the city into two. Go to the other side of the city. What's the problem with that? The Israelis are like, look, man, you guys have so much land. Just take the two million, get it, get it out, and give us Gaza. The Israelis, at least for now, they want the West Bank and Gaza. That's what they want. They want to transfer the Palestinians in the West Bank into Jordan and then the people in Gaza into Egypt. Very simple. So that's the, so, 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 so nobody wants to, like Iran, when we say Iran is doing something, what are they doing? They're not doing anything. The, the, the Iranians basically have no problem with the Israelis and their loss of back, you know, back channel uh, discourse between the Israelis and the Iranians. And, and uh, that's how it works. Their concern is not Israel. Their concern is to dominate the Middle East. Okay? And, and, and that's why. So if, if you think basically... What, so what did Iran do until now, basically? So people would say that... Sending uh, messages. Yes, so they sponsored non-state actors. They've been putting some level of pressure... But even these non-state so actors, all, yeah. all, 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 like all of this is basically... There's no real pressure. All what they want to do is basically make sure that Gaza stays. Because mm. the Americans want Gaza to stay. Mm. And they don't want population travel. They, they, I'm not. This is not like analysis. The Americans have said we are against the transfer of Palestinians outside of Gaza. Period. The Amer Americans made it a red line. You see what I'm saying? So that's 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 why. So they, they the Americans are utilizing Iran and its tools in the region to pressure Netanyahu to stop this this project of the transfer of Palestinians, ethnic cleansing. That's it. So if somebody's using that, if, if, if the Americans are using the, these are as tools, and we, we shouldn't basically be evaluating it this way and say, well, at least they're doing something. They're being used by the Americans. So somebody might say, well, they want, you, want, they want them to, you want them to do nothing. It's not about that. It's about understanding the power dynamics so we're not basically become a bunch of lambs and a and, and bunch of like, you know, camels and, and, and herd to be, to be led by, by, by the superpower. Look, the reason we are in such a humiliating position as an ummah is because we don't understand world politics. International relations is something that's very difficult, especially in this day and age where disinformation is heavy. It's probably like the, the, the State Department has a disinformation department. <laughs> like, you, know what I'm, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and then there's an infor information avalanche. There's an information overload with the internet and communication systems. Things would have been were different in the 60s, right? So... I understand what you said. Now I'm thinking from another perspective, right? Sure. What people would say in this situation, where they would say that um, that these proxies took hits, 
right? They've gotten decimated at leadership levels. They've countries got damaged. And meanwhile, you have like on TikTok, you'll see the genocide in Gaza. Other people, you know, maybe their their organizations getting hit and they're taking the heat for. And people would say standing up for Palestine. And you mentioned that there there's a bigger agenda at play. And then mean in the meanwhile, there's just Saudi Arabia just putting on Zionists on their TV channels or or you know, um, Jordan boycotting tomatoes or something like just so it's just the embarrassing level of almost like there is no Sunni voice that's standing up, even even in a way that um, makes the emotions go up in the yeah. Ummah. You know what I mean? Like they Oh definitely, definitely. Look like like me, I'm, first of all, I'm not here basically put like I'm not really here like discrediting a- anybody. I'm just trying to explain mm. the politics. Yes. And definitely like I would uh, highly uh, criticize and critique uh, you know the, the Sunni countries Egypt and Jordan and, and, and the Gulf states for not doing anything to the Palestinians. Mm. They would easily basically can put basically lots of pressure. And Turkey, by the way, why, why, why did I miss Turkey? Like, the whole Muslim world. But anyway, this is, these are the countries surrounding. The Turkey, for example, is still basically trading with, with Israel. The Gulf is still basically, for example, selling oil freely to anybody and everybody and blah, blah. And Egypt basically is protecting the, the, uh, the, the Israeli state and even basically have economic ties. Yeah, at least cut them like economic ties. Have a little bit of, uh, but but subhanAllah, akhi, we are in a state of affairs where yani, there's no more humanity in people's hearts. And the ummah, uh, it seems basically have accepted this, this, this uh, humiliation. And inshallah, inshallah, we need to now rise up. And nothing will solve our problems except an Islamic unity in the Muslim world. Where we become free. We need to free, we want to freely elect our leaders. Is, mm. this, is this too much to ask? Like we, we want we want free elections. There's free elections here in the West. They always basically try to promote democracy and this and that. I mean, put democracy aside. We want free elections. We want in the Ummah to have free elections. Is this too much to ask? We want to stop the corruption at every level in our countries. So we can build an economy, we can build business, we can build universities, we can build a civilization. Is that too much to ask? You see what I'm saying? So definitely, definitely, we have to criticize all these states that have let down Gaza and let down, now maybe they're letting down even Lebanon right now. And they've let down the, the, the Syrians in the, in, the, in the Syrian revolution. You see what I'm saying? And that's, what, that's why basically when we speak about, for example, Hezbollah. Hezbollah uh, supported the tyrant of Syria. And that's why basically I'm not going to go clap for somebody who can be used in an evil. Like it's just, it seems basically it's a tool. Like, I, I don't know when it's going to be in my belly, right? It's a knife. You know? Yesterday they slaughtered the, the Syrians. So now they're trying to help, the, 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 to defend the people of Gaza and basically be, a, be a, a piece on the chessboard of negotiation to push Netanyahu. I'm not going to go clap. See what I'm saying? But I'm going to understand the politics. Politics, we need to, to lower the emotions and basically use this. Okay. And to understand politics, you need to understand lots of stuff. You need to understand, definitely, first of all, the, the political issues, the geopolitical issues at the three levels, local, regional, and, and global. You need to understand the economies. You need to understand uh, the military affairs, understand power and power projection. You need to understand security affairs and operations from a security perspective. How does that happen? Look at my, look how Hezbollah basically was infiltrated. And the, the, to be honest, that, that operation was almost like it is, it is very sly, okay? But it, it was very effective. See what I'm saying? Lots of, even innocent civilians are di- di- died in this. And we said that the United Nations described it as, as, as a possible war crime. So, so this is, this is and, and many more things, geography and history, and, and, and there are lots of stuff to understand politics. It's simple. That's why um, people are not like born with it. People can easily maybe do some common sense mathematics or arithmetics and learn some some basics in the school, but but this type of education, you know, is not uh, sadly as ubiquitous. It's not as widespread within within mm. our communities. Everybody wants to be a doctor and an engineer, right? So to be a nice little uh, good slave for the corporations. So looking forward, uh, we spoke about many things, and you mentioned uh, Sunni. You mentioned Sunni and Shia unity. Now is this now, situation a 
signal for now that we can start this Sunni Shia unity? And if so, how? Muslim unity. We, don't, we, we, we are not here to spread more sectarianism. So there's no such thing as Sunni and Shia from, from Allah's perspective. There's a Muslim. If you're a Muslim, yeah, and you're a true believer, yeah, inshallah you're going to end up in Jannah. You have sins, God can either punish you and send you to heaven or, or, or forgive you and send you to heaven. You have some uh, partial wrong beliefs, like the Shia, like the, 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 even some Sufis and so forth. You might get punished or get forgiven and then end up in Jannah. So... Uh, at the end of the day, as Muslims, even if look at the end of the day, what is a munafiq? Is a Muslim? Rasulullah treated the munafiqin in Yathrib in Medina, yeah, والسلام, as Muslims. We, خلاص, a person does an infraction, gets punished for that. As long as he's Muslim outwardly, we treat him like a Muslim. Muslims are supposed to hold hands together and create a unity. Period. So yes, I would definitely would call for full unity between the Muslimin, Arabs and non-Arabs. Uh, Hanafis and Hanbalis and Shafi'is and, and Malikis, Sunnis and Shia, we have to basically put our hands together. We need to create uh, the, the peace that's needed within our countries and, and remove the hate so we can build a civilization. But but look, nobody's going to give you unity. Unity is demanded. U- unity is taken. Independence is demanded and is taken. You, nobody's going to come to here be independent. Well, for, for, for what? They're gonna give you. Cha- they're gonna do charity. America's gonna do charity to go to Jannah. Yani, uh, Biden's gonna go. I need to do some charity before I, I meet Allah. Nobody's gonna give you. Or the Chinese or the Russians. It's the survival of the fittest. That's how it is. Nobody can go say, "Oh, can you help me?" Or let's can go to. There's no court at the global level. Definitely not the United Nations. That's a joke. Like, okay, look, WWE is the United Nations. That's the best mm-hmm. thing to, for today. It's our slogan. If you if you want to talk about WWE, it's the United Nations. That's that's the biggest WWE. Actually, they invented WWE. I'm just being sarcastic. <laughs> and the final thing here is um, we spoke about Iran's goals. We spoke about different elements. We spoke about Sunni Shia unity. Now, and, and political awareness, the importance of political awareness. Now, thinking about the future now, let's give kind of some guess guesswork here because no one can really say for sure. Israel has been saying, you know, threatening retaliation. Now, what could that possibly look like? And are we headed for World War III? <laughs> World War III, no. You know, this is very unlikely. In terms of retaliation, 100%. There's no way, basically, on Earth, Israel will let this happen without a retaliation. Now, that retaliation, the Americans have told them that it needs to be calculated, figured it out. And, and sadly, basically, Israelis are not even listening to the Americans. So they're going to plan without telling Biden. And before the operation, by maybe 10 minutes, they'll speak to, to, to the, to the, uh, the uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman, the defense... Um, mm, Secretary of Defense. Secretary of Defense. I was going to say minister. Here in Canada, we have minister. Secretary of Defense. So the, the, but that's why the Biden administration is becoming very... like Biden was so angry... Was reported basically recently, just just earlier today. He like his his call phone calls with Netanyahu is like a screaming match. So, but but yeah, one hundred percent, the 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 Israelis will hit and will hit Iran. In my forecast, yeah. meaning it's highly likely, it might not happen at the end of the day, but highly likely that the Israelis will hit Iran in specific. Yeah. You can't you can't you can't like a country cannot basically let go and attack upon its uh, area, right? It's, it's it's without basically hitting back or sovereign land, right? So they were hit by 300 missiles, so they have to have uh, retaliation. So this is where now it gets, it gets very tricky, mm. because now the, the, the Israelis have two choices. Okay, They'll have to hit, I'm telling you. Okay, the, the third option of not hitting is like 1%. Okay, Could it happen? Sure. But in my view, it's 1%. The question is basically, are they going to hit now hard enough to cause a, an all-out war where they drag the United States into war against Iran? Possibility. Or would they basically kind of just, you know, uh, but that's risky. Risky for everybody. Risky for Iran, risky for the United States, risky for Israel, risky for everybody. But is it likely? It's, it's actually, there's a good chance this could happen. Okay? I'm not going to say it's high, but it's a possibility. Uh, the other thing is basically you're doing a limited crackdown in Iran. They don't want to hurt them, but they have to reply. Because the Israeli public is looking like, well, what is our country doing? What is Netanyahu doing? Mm. They're expecting a retaliation. And I'm telling you, it's highly likely. 
you know, 80%, 90%, whatever you want to say, uh, that there will be a retaliation against Iran in specific. It is not okay to just hit something outside Iran. That's not okay by the Israeli public, by any nation. Which is why I'm expecting retaliation. The question is basically, okay, what does now... Netanyahu has a card to create a regional war, yes. Yeah. Is it WW3? Don't think so. But uh, it's very. It's going to be very tense few next days because they have to reply back. Yeah, Jared Kushner made a post talking about, um, you just reminded me of it, where um, now that Hezbollah, the, which was the gun of, uh, of Iran, basically is weakened, now Israel has the ability to strike at anything nuclear related or oil related and it seems like he's almost like goading this and egging you know them on in that perspective is that what, something that he's looking forward to so is this something that's a possibility as well to strike those sites the nuclear sites in Iran yeah yes yani, yeah the issue is basically your contamination so this is mm. like the, but like what what do they hit within those I don't know mm. like you know so, so definitely they don't want like at the end of the day Iran is not too far away it is far, but it's not too far away. Would they hit it? Yeah, they might. Is, is it high possibility, low possibility? You know, probably low. Mm. But low here, we're not saying 1%. Low meaning 20%, mm. 30%. But, but again, this, this could be the way to get a an all, all out war. But they could mm. do it in through other ways. That's why I'm mm. saying like, you know, it could be. could be. Mm. Uh, but that that would be a different story. Yeah. Okay, well, Allah khairan, Sheikh. Today for the political analysis here at the okay. I3 Pulse. Inshallah Ta'ala, we'll have more episodes where we'll discuss um, specific topics. Anything you want us to discuss, leave in the comments. Share your thoughts down below. Jazakum Allah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.